Hey, what's going on? It is time for calisthenic skills. I love calisthenic skills. I like balancing on my hands. And most importantly, and this goes for life, this is a way from exercise, everything involves exercise as well, but everything. I like chasing skills. I like chasing that feeling of understanding how to do something that I didn't used to be able to do. And that's what we're doing here. And sometimes when you're chasing that one thing, you have to do practice that isn't the one thing you're trying to do. So if we talk about doing a handstand, it's not only about chucking yourself up and pouring all the weight into your hands. You might look out and catch balance a few times, but really, if your shoulders aren't strong enough, if your wrists can't perform, if your elbows can't perform, if your core can't perform, the handstand doesn't happen. So we need to separate out all those little bits and make them strong enough and make them good enough so that you guys know how to do all of these calisthenics skills. So calisthenics is just body weight training. So that can be press ups, body weight squats, pistol squats, handstands, headstands, crow pose, anything just body weight. No, no equipment necessary. Oh, it also involves pull ups, um, muscle ups, anything hanging off the bar, skin the cap, all that stuff. Hopefully when we get back to the gym, I'll be able to do some of these classes with a pull-up bar as well, which is gonna be exciting. So we're gonna actually do some pull-up training as well, because I know it's a movement that a lot of people struggle with, but I've got the good stuff to help you build up the parts you need to be able to get good at that stuff. But since we're just in my front room with no pull-up bar, we're gonna crack on with this training for bulletproof wrists and joints that can deal so that you can do pistol squats and you can kick yourself up into handstands and things like that. So let's get back to these wrist controlled articular rotations. I do these every day. Not like religiously, like I get up in the morning and I stand and wave my wrists around, but at some point in the day, I'm gonna check in with my joints and see how they work. So I'm doing them right now, but let's go through exactly what's going on. If you're struggling with this, I'd go one arm at a time and look at it and hold on to your forearm because what we don't want is your elbow to rotate like this, look. So if my hand's rotating like this, this isn't wrist action here, it's all happening up here. It's all in my elbow, look. You can kind of see that this wrist isn't changing. We want only your wrist to perform because it gets locked in place when you're in hand balances, press ups, anything like that. It gets locked into this place and doesn't really move all that much. So let's just go up and down first and take a point on your wrist, like a freckle, a hair, a, something that you can see, a vein, and just keep it still. Maybe even put your finger on it so it doesn't move and your hand goes up and down like this. And watch my fingers, see how my fingers are in line with my, the back of my hand here. It doesn't go like this, because if it does, look at the angle in my wrist. It's nothing. If I go like that and let my fingers turn, I'm getting no movement in the wrist. If I do that, can find a little bit of extra space. And then, oh, it's getting tired already. Then we look at doing this circular motion, which is harder because your wrist is normally helped out by your elbow and it'll start looking like this, where your wrist isn't doing the work, your elbow's joining in and taking away this function of the wrist. It's so important and it can help you so much. There we go. So let's do that with the other side. Just go up and down first, and try and feel what's going on. Try and understand it. Feel it, feel it, feel it. That's it. Going up and down, make sure your fingers aren't doing the thing. Squeeze into end range, squeeze into end range both sides. There we go. Then controlled articular rotations, going all the way around back around the other way. Now, we want your wrists to be able to perform jammed up in end range. So when you're in end range, we need your wrists to be able to push and pull. They need to be able to go in any direction and that can change how you look after your body weight. So to do that, we're going to do some pills and rails. We're gonna do this on the floor. I've mostly been doing this stood up like this. If you've been joining in this class, through lockdown, you'll know I'll get you to pull your fingers back, hold it, and then put your hand against here and try and load up these muscles so that you feel these muscles contract, these muscles stretch. We're going to do it on the floor. So, 
we're down onto all fours and just rock back and see this angle open up. Watch it open up as you come back. That should be nice and comfy. Like there's no weight on your wrist even. You can pick your wrist, your hands up and you wouldn't change anything. And then come over with straight elbows as far as you can and use your fingertips to push you back. Coming over as far as you can and use your fingertips to push you back. Keep pushing your chest away from the floor and it's your fingertips that are pushing back, which is actual wrist function here. Coming forwards and then all the way back. Now, we're going to go forwards and hold it in this stretch. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And it's got to be kind of comfortable. We're trying to teach your wrists new range, but I'm not trying to snap your wrists off. So if you're going like this and it hurts, don't let it hurt because it will, will hurt you. If it feels vulnerable, you are vulnerable. Make it smart. So hang out here. Keep hanging out. Push your chest away. While we're in this wrist end range, let's play around with our shoulders. Keep your elbows straight. And go shoulder blades together, shoulder blades apart. Shoulder blades together, shoulder blades apart. Keep coming down and back up, down and back up. That's it. And then, we need to push yourself back again and then drop back into this end range. Now, what we're going to do is pales, progressive angle isometric load. We need to push your fingertips down as hard as you can. Load up those fingertips and try and lean more. Load up your fingertips, try and lean more. Keep pushing those fingertips through the floor with all of your strength. Persuade your wrists to perform here. And go in three, two, one. And then we're going to do rails, regressive angle isometric loading. So we're going to load up these muscles here by trying to pick your fingertips up. But I want to lean forwards and try and pick your fingertips up. It doesn't actually matter if they lift or not, but you should be able to tap this muscle here and it should be tight. You should be able to feel like it's contracted and it's on. Keep lifting those fingertips up like you mean it, like you're trying to teach your body something. Push your chest away from the floor and pick those fingertips up. Lean forwards more, pick those fingertips up. Go in three, two, one, and come out. And hopefully, no pain. Very tired in the forearms, very tired in the wrists, but no pain. Coming down and back up, down and back up. So, I like this class to stick to these prerequisites. These bits that we don't train, so when we get back to it, you'll be doing press-ups, you'll be doing shoulder press, you'll be doing your classes, whatever you do, but you're probably not going to do wrist work. And that can so easily get left behind. So just make a few fists like this, like make fists, spread those fingers out, and just get those some blood pumping back through those forearms because they're just being jammed in end range. Mine are hot, should heat up, should be able to feel it. Okay, now let's get into some shoulder stuff. I want you to go, Hands behind your head and let your elbows fall forwards. Now, when you pull your elbows back, try and feel your muscles in your shoulders perform. Pull shoulders back more, like even more, if I just come down onto my knees so that you can see my fingertips and stuff as well. So, elbows back more, pull them back more, and squeeze here. Then open your hands out, and then try and point your thumbs down as you pull back, and then Pull back as far as you can and reach up your back and then back down again turn your thumbs up hands behind your head and pull your elbows back and we're working on getting these shoulders to find all of this end range stuff if you've been coming to my yoga classes you'll know I'll talk about this end range strength so much and I'll never stop talking about it because I can feel it. I know that I've improved from training like this. I'm good at stuff. It shows that I don't get injured. I do stupid things. I practice cartwheels. I do crazy stuff. I'm nearly 40 and I'm not getting injured because I keep on checking in slowly and methodically with my joints. Because my joints work well, my muscles work well. And because my muscles work well, my neuromuscular system works well. So that's my brain can talk to my muscles well. I can learn skills. Oh, it's so hard. And just move your neck side to side. It might have loosened some stuff off here as well. Okay, let's get into some hard work. Let's talk a little bit about uh, pistol squats first. Just because your arms and your forearms have done a fair bit of work, I want them to rest a bit. And then when they're nice and fresh again, we'll go for some press-ups and some hand balances. 
So we're going to do some easy pistol squats. I'm good at pistol squats, I can rattle them out, I can do rep after rep after rep, and I'm fine with that, but this tires me out as well. It don't, even if you've got it, it's cool to check in with this. So I want you to point your foot forwards and tense your bum while you balance on one foot. And you're gonna stand just in front of your sofa. Come on, balance. So, tense your bum, poke it, see if you can make it tense. Then we're going to drop your bum back onto the sofa. Keep this foot off the floor, keep it pointing forwards. I want you to stand up from here with no kip. No kip means you can't sit down like this and then go like that. We'll see how I like chucked myself forwards. I want you to feel how your foot pushes through the floor and gets you back up. You'll probably find it's really hard if your foot's too far forwards. So you probably want your foot quite close to the sofa. All right, we're gonna go alternate. Naturally, let's go for one minute at a time on each leg. Okay, so you've got 10 seconds. I want you to point one of your feet forwards and tense your bum here. Tense your bum hard, reach fists forwards and do the softest landing you can on the sofa. Put all the weight into the sofa and then tense your bum, tense your belly. Tense your bum as you stand up. Sitting all the way down and stand back up and feel your glutes tense and make this hip flexor work. Higher up this foot goes, the harder this will be. But let's see if you can keep this foot up high. Point your toes and get this hip flexor to work and you can rest when you want. It's just one minute of your best effort. Tense your bum every time. This is the weakest bit for me. Hip flexors, they need work. They need this individual work. And this isn't only for help with your pistol squats as well. Getting these hip flexors to be strong through their full range can help so much in even handstands. There we go, okay. 10 seconds to get ready for this other leg. So point this foot forwards, tense your bum, keep the outside of your foot pushed down, keep your footprint quality. As you tense your bum to stand up, feel your glutes. Do the thing here, and we'll do another uh, pistol squat exercise after this. As you stand up, I want you to really feel like those bum muscles are on tight. Soft landing and back up. See how there's no kip? There's no like huh, trying to throw my hands forwards to get this to happen. And I want a clear team of muscles from my ankle to my knee to my hip to my core. They all work together to keep me safe so that I can hit these pistol squats with confidence and strength and I can understand what happens if I, my knee collapses inwards, if I get knee valgus like this, my instep collapses and it spins me round and I feel like my knee's not in control. There we go, that'll do. That's, and I feel like I'm, it's not part of it. Okay, now we're going to look at the bottom part of your pistol squat. If you come down into a low squat um, like this with your feet kind of pointing out a bit and sit as low as you can. If you need to, Bring one hand back behind you and this other hand forwards. Pick this foot up and see if you can reach your hands forwards and balance. You might not be able to, you might need this hand here and that's okay. And try this on the other hand, on the other foot. So one hand behind you, one hand forwards. Pick this up and see if you can reach your hands forwards and balance and back again. So let's have a little play around. We're gonna go one leg at a time for a whole minute I want you to fall over. So you're going to go pistol squat. If you don't have this in you, you're back to the sofa ones. If you're scared of this, back to the sofa ones. Falling down, rolling up onto your shoulders and trying to get back to this position here. If you can't stand up on one foot, you're back again. And it's all right leg. So it goes like this, balance, sit down, lie down, and use a bit of momentum to get back up like that. And you're rolling back and rolling all the way up. If you're good and your tibialis anterior is strong, you might be able to do this, which is sit all the way down, boom on the floor, come on, back up, like that. And that is my body just understanding how to maneuver myself around so that I can go boom down and pull 
my ankle into dorsiflexion, which is where my knee pulls past my toes like that. I am strong there. I'm not going to get injured there ever. Ever. Because I practice it. I'm good at it. I'm never going to get an Achilles injury. I don't think I will. And I run and sprint. Sorry, let's go one more. Yes. So this is kind of what I'm, I like about this. It makes me resilient. I can feel it. I can feel like my foot, my ankle's strong because I practice this fairly regularly. So into this other leg then, into your pistol squat, balancing, push your big toes down, tense your bum, sitting all the way down, rolling up onto your shoulders. Use this little bit of momentum to get back up. If you can't get the up part of the pistol squat, just stand up. However you stand up is fine. So if you haven't got it, it comes down, well, no, try and get to this, and then you bring this foot underneath you. And we're just training these hip flexors, your ankle, your knee, to be able to perform in all of these. If there's any pain anywhere, take steps back. We started with the ones on the sofa. You can stick with that if you want. That can stay, that can be your practice. It will help get your hips and your knees to be able to work as part of a team. Oh, come on. Takes a little bit more concentration on this left leg for me. That's it, so push those big toes down. Let's go one more. Oh, yes, love that exercise. So let's get into the hand balance thing. We'll go straight into crow poses first and then we're going to practice more kicking up into handstands see if we can get you nice and brave so if i bring my phone down here for a timer let's start just going through the basics of bouncing on your hands this is the easiest one that easiest version i'll do so many different versions and different techniques and ways of doing it you might find this isn't your favorite but i find this one the easiest so you sit like this doesn't matter if you're on your toes a little bit, jam your elbows on the inside of your knees and spread your hands out. So you've got these fingertips ready to push into the floor. And you bring your hands down. So while you're in this little frog position, I want you to lengthen your neck, push your chin up into your neck and feel your shoulder blade spread as your chest comes back. And then go tiptoes to lean forwards and keep your chin pulling away from the floor. Then get your head to come as far forward as you can, chin away from the floor, and then maybe these toes can tap the floor. You can go toes together as you squeeze your knees into your elbows and just hang here and then drop back. That is your only exit is to drop back. If your exit is to like collapse down, that isn't the one. Make sure you're keeping nice and high. So let's go again. We're gonna go a little bit easier this time. We're just gonna clap our feet together twice and then drop back onto our feet. So my knees pull in, my elbows push out, and then as I lean forwards, I twist my hands into the floor like I'm trying to turn my hands out. Clap, clap, and then back again. Let's go again. Clap, clap, and fingertips push me back. So remember what I was talking about, how your fingertips help you balance. So when you push your fingertips into the floor harder, it pushes your feet back. There's an isometric, which means you kind of stay still and just push to be able to find that balance and keep it. If you just have your hands just on the floor and you just kind of go into it and you kind of drop down like this, balance is really hard. It's got to be coming from those fingertips. Okay, we're going to go for a minute of our best effort of trying to catch this and hold it. Catch it and hold it. Every time you want out, you can come out, you can move your wrists around, you can do whatever you need to be all right. But if you can hold it for a whole minute, we're gonna hold it for a whole minute. So, we've got 10 seconds. We're gonna do the version where you squeeze your knees into your elbows, and you try and twist your hands into the floor so your elbows are pulling in as well. So we'll go toes touching, heels up towards your bum, and just hold and breathe, hold and breathe. And see how when, if I drop my head forwards, I don't know if you can tell, my weight's falling forwards, my fingertips are pushing me back. My knees are squeezing into my elbows. And I keep falling forwards, heels up to my bum, pushing my chest away from the floor, 
and just finding this balance and breathing. That's 30 seconds. Let's have a little rest. I'm going to move my wrists around. You can rest whenever you want. Move my wrists around, get some circulation back in there. And I'm good to go again for 20 second hold if I've got it. Let's come into it, head forward, heel up. Heels up towards your bum, point your toes, toes touching. Keep squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. Keep pushing your chest away, chin away from the floor, fell out. <laughs> Three, two, one. There we go, cool. So I hope you get that, that this twisting your hands into the floor is so important. And hip flexors are important as well. They need to be strong up here so that I can pull them around and use them to create this structure. Right, let's get into much more difficult territory now. We're going to go kicking up into a handstand. I'm going to reiterate my points from last week and hopefully you guys are on board and you can catch up. If this is too, too hard for you, don't worry about it. If you're just kicking and you feel like your legs are coming this far off the floor, just do it anyway. It's fine, as long as you're not hurting yourself, it's fine. So you get into a runner's stance like this, so split feet. Split feet is important, and you bring your belly down onto your thigh and bring your hands down about shoulder width apart. This leg is going to do a big swing like this. I want you to just swing this leg and feel your bum muscles catch like that. And I'm trying to pour all the way into my hands first. So my hands are heavy on the floor first. I swing this up and then as I hit peak of this swing, I do a little punch like this. It goes like this and I try and punch this leg straight up. So watch it, it doesn't swing all the way around in a C shape like this. It kind of punches up and confirms upright. And we're not bothered about catching balance. I'm just going to swing this leg up and punch this leg up and punch this leg up and punch this leg up. And as I hit that upright, I'm trying to squeeze everything. I'm like, oh. I'm trying to make myself tall, which will never happen. But I'm trying to reach, reach, reach and tense my bum, feet together. And I'm trying to just catch that position, catch that position, catch that position. I'm not bothered about doing it and holding it and wobbling or anything like that. This is about training this kick up one leg at a time. So it goes. In this running stance, make your hands heavy, lock your elbows, swing this leg up. So it's swing and punch, swing, punch, swing, punch. I'm going to do some rubbish ones as well. So I'm going to go up. Uh, and I came out sideways because I did a rubbish one. And that's okay, but you've got to be ready for that. You've got to be ready to cartwheel out of it. And it helps you so much gain the confidence that you can get upright. If yours look like this, that's okay. Try and keep doing it. Just keep doing it and keep the weight on your hands and your bum muscles will probably be burning. It'll be sore tomorrow because it takes so much punching with these legs. We're still on the first leg, by the way. We're going to go into our second leg in a second. But I want you to get that when you, with your hands on the floor, your hips travel up a little bit. So if I've got my hands here, look. Look at where my hips are and look at where they travel to. So as I swing, my hips go up, over the top of my shoulders. My head. The biggest, most important thing with this kick up is that your head doesn't push forwards. So as you kick up, your head, you don't like sink your shoulders and head forwards because that's when you collapse down into the floor because you've not made this structure from the fingertips up your forearms into your shoulders. It needs to be on strong, which is why your hands need to be heavy on the floor. Don't let your head move. Glance in between your hands and keep that on, still on this same leg. Let's go for again for three more goes. So, hands down in this running stance, head looks in between your hands, swing up, punch, swing up, punch, swing up, punch, and then just land and come out nice and safe. And you come out of it probably different every time, and that's kind of what I'm after. I'm after this variation. You can feel what you missed when your hands 
try and pull away from the floor and whatever you've got going on. Now the hard bit is trying to kick up on your weak leg. If nothing happens and your feet are just like kicking off the floor like, like this, keep going. Don't give up on it. Just keep going with it until you get the confidence that this leg is strong enough to get it. And it comes from this first leg swinging up. So let's go right back to the beginning again and just practice this first position. You're in your running stance like this, one foot forwards, one foot back. Bring your belly onto your thigh, hip flexor compressed on this side and bring your hands down and make your hands heavy. Look between your hands and push your hands through the floor. Make a handprint. Swing this leg up like this. Swing, 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 swing. If you feel like you're starting to go like this and your hands are lifting, that isn't it. Keep them heavy and then try and lift this foot up, lift this foot up and lift this foot up. And then we're gonna practice with that punch straight up. Some good, some bad all quality because you're just practicing. We're just learning. It's all right if it's not perfect. As long as you're safe and you're not falling over, remember to cartwheel out if you need out. Just land sideways, try and look for the floor with your feet and you'll be okay. Don't let yourself do a forward roll. Okay, let's see. So hands down, hands heavy, going up and punch, up and punch, up and punch, up and punch. Let's go one more. Oh, come on, left leg. Certainly not as confident for me there with my left leg, and that's okay. They're never always perfect, but we're trying to get some consistency so that you can feel what goes wrong. And I kind of know what goes wrong with me because I've done handstands for so long. I can feel when I'm getting them right, feel when I'm getting them wrong, feel like I know what is missing. And what happens if we do a playground handstand like this, where you're like, Chuck yourself up like that. You never know because your hands hit the floor and your hips are already traveling and it's so hard to put the brakes on. You end up, if you really practice it, you can get good at it. You can get good at anything if you practice it enough, but there's too many variables to doing this where you hit the floor and throw your hands down. Your heels are traveling over your body and you're very likely to go over. So likely. If you do that against a wall, it can be a good practice to get you confident being upside down. For sure it can, but you end up only being able to do it with the safety net of the wall there, which is a great tool, but it can't be the only way. It just can't be. It's, it doesn't work all that well. Let's go again. Weak leg into your running stance. So weak leg forwards, hands down, pour all the way into your hands. Swing this leg up first. So swing and punch, swing and, oh come on, swing and punch. Swing and punch, swing and punch. And that, getting your glutes to squeeze while you're upside down, it's a game changer. It'll change how you balance on your hands so much if you can go like this. Practice it stood up, put your heels together, tense your bum by squeezing your heels together and feel your abs join in. So you feel like that is a structure cross-sectioning your body to make your torso strong. Okay, let's get into some head stand practice. I don't need the cushion, I don't know why I'm putting it down. You can totally have a cushion on the floor if you want it. I prefer not to. I prefer to have my hands at the same height as my head and I know that shape, I know that feeling. Please be safe here. If you want to do it up against a wall or a door, just make sure the door's going the closed way and no one's going to come in and open the door on you. Be super safe with this but we should be able to get into this balancing and you need to be pushing through the floor and you need to be in a tripod. So you know what a tripod is, three points on the floor. That has to be the way. If you're a bar like this, with your hands either side of your head, never gonna happen. You're not gonna balance. You are gonna fall over, 100%, if your hands are in line with your head. Your neck, your head, doesn't take all of your weight. You need to be strong enough to push with your hands. Your hands have to be pushing through the floor. So, coming down, push your elbows apart with your knees, bring your hands down, and we go into a little crow pose, and then I want your head to touch the floor in front of your hands. So crow pose, head touches the floor, then we pick our heels up. Keep this shape here, 
So you're all tucked up and feel your hands pushing into the floor. You push as hard as you can, but not so hard that you go like this and do a fold roll. You could if you wanted to do a fold roll, but we don't want to balance on our hands. And finding that just right push that pushes you up and you're almost trying to lift your head. So you're trying to go like this rather than like this, where your head kind of gets pushed out of the way. You're trying to lift all of your body weight up with your hips right over the top. Try going one leg up first. So we're going, squeeze your elbows into your knees, tuck your chin into your chest, push up, go one foot up and go other foot up and keep your feet pushed together. Find this shape. See if you can tense your belly, tense your bum. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Three, two, one. And a nice, easy exit. If you don't have an easy exit, please get someone to spot you. Get a family member, even if it's a child. A small child can help you bring your feet back down to the floor, hopefully. Don't crush anyone, don't kick anyone in the head, please. So, once we've got that, maybe you find it easier to go legs out. So the wider your base, uh, sorry, the, the shorter your body is, the easier it is to balance. So if we go legs out, we might be able to find that balance a bit more, be able to find this tension in the belly, tension in the glutes, to be able to cross section <coughs> what we've got going on. So sitting like a frog like this, elbows, uh, sorry, knees squeeze into your elbows, tuck your chin and point your toes out, tense your bum, and keep pushing the floor away. Point your toes, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Going three, two, one. Coming down. And it's this push, and it's the same push for all of this stuff. And it's a feeling, it's a connection, and it's knowing how to create a structure through your forearms, through your lats, everything. So when you, if you just come into a press-up position, to practice this, I'm gonna stay stood up so I can talk to the camera. Get into a press-up position, feel your hands on the floor like this, and twist your hands into the floor, and then drop yourself down so you've got bent elbows, and twist your hands more into the floor, like you're trying to turn your hands out, but they're not going anywhere, because they're stuck, and then push yourself away from the floor as hard as you can, with bent elbows. Tense everything, and push, and twist, and push, and twist, and this rotational tension, I promise you, it's a structure, it creates a line of tension that goes all the way around your body, comes into your torso, around your rib cage. How do you think you're gonna balance with your all like wobbly and bendy? You might be able to, you might be able to catch skeleton balance, which is just where you let everything flop and you, you let your skeleton do the thing, but it hasn't got that much control. So if we do a very quick little finish of a uh, downward facing dog press up, so we're going downward facing dog, tiptoes, bring your head forwards, and then we're going to try and lift your feet up this and see how I can hold this position and talk. It's because, I promise you it's because I'm twisting my hands into the floor and that is strong. I've improved that. I've consistently, consistently got more and more and more twisting my hands into the floor. And I get that from bending the bar when I do bench press. I get it when I do shoulder press, I twist the back, everything that's got something that's stuck. I'm doing this, and it makes serratus anterior that attaches to the underside of your shoulder blade and comes down your rib cage, creates this structure. Keep practicing it. It's not only for this showing off and balancing on your hands, it's for your shoulder's health. It shares the load out between everything, and it's exciting for me, which is why I get all worked up about it. It's so cool. Thank you so much. For joining in that is all we've got time for i'm back again tomorrow for senior yoga don't worry if you're not old i'm not old i'm in the prime 38 prime of my life teaching senior yoga <laughs> and you'll be all right it's still tough because you all work to your potential and that's what i make such a big deal about when i talk about exercise it's you you've turned up what you, with what you've got your body your muscles your history your injuries you can't do the same as me. You can't do the same as the person next to you. You might do more than me. You might do more than the person next to you, but I've still got stuff to teach you about how you control your body. I promise you, stick around and try it and give it a good go. 
I appreciate you all so much. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me. And I will see you tomorrow for Senior Yoga um, at 10 a.m.-ish, I think. 10 a.m. Yes, I'll see you then. Bye, everyone. Bye.